Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have something of a different of a video because today I'll be reviewing some custom cards made by Plague Amon and they are Legends of Frontera Champions as MTG cards. Now, the reason behind me making this video is because I was scrolling through the subreddit, as I usually do, and I just encountered this amazing thread, which got a lot of upvotes, uh, which I should give him plus one right now. I haven't read all the cards, I only read the first card, and I thought to myself, wow, this is amazing, I really want to make a video about this, because this is really, really, really awesome. And uh, as you remember, I've made, I also made a reaction video about the Lege League of Legends cinematic and it immediately became my second most viewed video on this channel. So it seems like you guys love reaction content and I want to make more of these and I do love reviewing cards and reviewing custom cards just seemed like the next logical step. So I'm, you know, kind of experimenting here with you guys. So let me know if you guys like this type of videos. Also, let's hope the YouTube algorithm likes this type of videos, but, but yeah. Uh, reviewing custom cards is always, always a neat thing to do and give kind of my, you know, two cents about uh, how they're designed. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video and just a disclaimer, this won't hurt the consistency of my videos. I'm not planning to put this video, to upload this video as part of my regular schedule. I'm kind of gonna, I'm just gonna probably squeeze, the, squeeze this video in between videos. So yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So. Uh, let's start with the first one. This is the only card that I've actually read. In case you don't know Magic the Gathering, I assume you're here from Legends of Frontera content. I'm gonna explain a little bit so you won't be confused. And yeah, so Garen, the Might of Demacia, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, 2 red, which is already kind of weird to me. Uh, Garen should definitely be white colored. I, I think it's perfect as Boros because the reason is white color in magic represents order and that's literally what Demacia is all about. So yeah, I mean not making Garen like white colored even if it just, you know, a bit, it's kind of weird. Like mono red, it, it, mono red fits Noxus. It, it doesn't fit like Demacia dude <laughs> at all. It doesn't fit Demacia. So it's just weird to me that it, it's not Boros or at least mono white. But sure, I mean, okay. But I guess he did wrote here that it made them purely on mechanics and not on flavor. So I guess that makes sense. But yeah, Garen should be mono red. If you ask for my opinion, at least. So, Garen, Might of Demacia, 5 mana, 5 5 haste. Now, in case you don't know what haste means, it basically means uh, you can attack the same round you summoned him, because usually when you summon a creature in magic, it cannot attack in the same round unless it, it has haste. So, this has haste, uh, whenever Garen deals combat damage, put a strike counter on it. Pretty sick. You can already tell where this is going. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, so that's after you went into combat, untap all creatures you control. After this phase, there is an additional combat phase. This ability triggers only once each turn, and only if there are two or more strike counters on Garen. So yeah. Perfect, dude. Perfect. He integrated Garen perfectly into Magic the Gathering. I mean, it's uh, the two strike counters supposed to represent the level up. And yeah, I think in terms of power level, I don't know if it will see play. I mean, getting another combat is usually, usually really rare in Magic the Gathering. You don't see card with this effect. And if you do, it has a lot of backdraws because this is a really powerful effect. And the fact that you just slapped it on a 5 mana 5-5 five, five unit with haste. But he does need to deal combat damage twice. I, I believe combat damage just means dealing damage in, during combat. So even if you get blocked, it still works. Which is just like it works in Legends of Frontera. That's perfect. Uh, yeah, this card. I, I think if this card would have existed, I could definitely see one of uh, this card existing. Would it see play? I mean, 5 mana 5-5 five, five with haste isn't that great. There are a lot of better cards right now in Magic. Uh, but yeah, I think this card would have actually seen play. Just because of the secondary effect is so scary. It is so scary, but definitely not in Mono Red. Again, you would not run this card in Mono Red. Mono Red just looks to finish the game in like having like 3, maximum 4 lands. You never reach 5 mana with Mono Red. If you did, you probably lost the game because you flooded. But yeah. Definitely not in Mono Red, you would have considered running this in Boros, and actually he's a human knight, you can actually run this in Explorer in Winota, which can- Oh, that could be so sick in Winota, I just thought about it. 
Holy, that can actually be sick. Yeah, I think this card would have seen play, actually. That's a really cool, that, that's such a phenomenal design, dude. I really love the fact, the only thing I'm, you know, against is obviously the mono red, but that's, you know, my pet peeve here. So, wow, incredible. Let's go to the second card, which I haven't seen. From now on, these, these are cards I haven't seen. Lux is Jeskai. Perfect, dude. Perfect. I knew, dude, I swear I knew Lux was gonna be Jeskai. This is perfect. So, if you don't know, Jeskai is basically this three color combination, red, blue, and white. Jeskai is basically just spell slinging and stuff that, uh, well, when I say spell, everything in magic is called a spell, which is kind of cringe, but that's how you know the game is. Uh, when I say a spell, I mean spell in Legends of Runeterra term, where you just, you know, a spell. I don't mean, like, units. <clears throat> so, basically, Jeskai is all about spell slinging, which is really, really, really cool. And, yeah, Lux, Lady of Luminosity. Human Wizard. Uh, how much mana she is? Uh, five mana, again. Okay, five mana. Five mana, four, six. That's a solid stat line. Lux, Lady of Luminosity, entered Battlefield with a shield counter on it. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, I'm kind of new to magic myself, but shield counter is... Oh, it's supposed to represent her barrier. Oh, I get that. Well, basically shield counter in magic is when she's taking damage, you just remove the shield counter instead. And I believe that also if you try to destroy a unit while it has a shield counter, the shield also destroys. So it kind of supposed to represent a barrier, but it works quite different in magic. But still, uh, really cool. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, of course, put X charge counters on Lux, where X is the amount of mana spent, spent to cast it, well, spent to cast it. I assume you need to reach the six. Yeah, remove six charge counters from Lux, Lady of Luminosity, deal for damage to target creature, any access is dealt to the creature controller. <laughs> That's so sick. That's so sick. That's exactly what she does. Wow, again, dude, he nailed it on the head here. I mean, that's a perfect representation of how Lux actually works and functions in Legends of Terror. This is incredible. And he nailed the flavor also. I mean, the Jeskai, yeah, that's perfect. Nailed the colors, nailed it. Yeah, that's insane. That's insane. Wow, dude, I wish it would have existed in Magic so bad. I would have built so many decks around this card. Holy dude, I wish it existed so bad. Uh, let's think. Okay, 5 mana, 4, 6. Obviously, a solid stat line, solid defensive stat line. Not really aggressive, but you kind of want her to chill, to sit back and chill. She does come with some sort of protection on her. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, which happens all the time, and wants to reach the 6. I, I think she's kind of slow. I think she's kind of slow. I mean... Listen, magic isn't like Legends of Frontera. You don't have spell mana. If you wanna wait, you wanna use six mana, you have to tap six mana. So that's difficult. That's really difficult. And also, mana isn't that like um, you know ubiquitous as a as it is Runeterra in you know in magic. Well, ubiquitous it might not be the right word, but you know you, you don't get mana every time. I mean, if you know how to play magic, you don't get your mana every round. You can be stuck on four mana for like ten rounds if you're unlucky. And reaching six, it's quite tough. Reaching six, man, that's a lot. I'm kind of having difficulties, you know, even to think on what, which deck you, you're gonna put it on. I think she's on the weaker side. I, I think that if, you know, this card would have been in Magic the Gathering right now, it wouldn't have seen play. It's just too slow. It's just too slow. And honestly, doing all of that and casting like six mana worth of spells just to deal four damage to a target creature... Ah, uh, that's not enough. That's not enough. It's perfect for Legends of Runeterra because of how Runeterra works with spell mana. Uh, and the fact that you get mana every single round. But with magic, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's just too expensive. It's way too expensive. Maybe if she were 4 mana, that would have been great. But the fact that she cost 5, yeah, a bit too much. So I don't think Lux would have seen play. <clears throat> but again, perfect, perfect integration into magic card. So... Fiora the Grand Duelist. Dude, stop putting the Masia cards in non-white. Golgari? Fiora is Gul Dude, Fiora is Azorius. Maybe. Maybe. Ah, uh, no Azorius. I mean, uh, Orzov. Orzov is white and black. But come on, dude. No white? I mean, Golgari. That's so weird. Why would you put Fiora in Golgari? Uh, okay. Golgari is black and green, by the way. So, yeah. 4 mana. 4-4. Uh, four, four. Provoke. 
Okay, I have no idea what provoke does. I've I've totally forgotten. Uh, Fiora is dealt damage in the form of minus one, minus one counters. Okay. Oh, dealt damage. So if someone deal her damage, she get minus one, minus one counters. Whenever a creature that was dealt damage by Fiora this turn dies, put a victory counter on Fiora, then for the way, you win the game. Yep, that's pretty much what she does in Legends of Terror. That's pretty sick. I, I think Provoke, just by the name of it, it's some it's supposed to represent Challenger, so maybe you get to pick which blocker is gonna block against you. So I'm gonna assume that this is it. But I've never heard about this keyword before. Again, I'm kinda new to magic, so I've never heard about this keyword. But yeah, this is pretty much a perfect uh, representation. This is this is nice, this is a really nice card. The only thing I don't understand is why the hell is Gulgari, but yeah. I don't think it will seem play. I mean, 4 mana, 4 5 without charge, without any stats, it's way too slow for magic. It definitely would not see any single play. And magic also really, really lacks defensive cards. I mean, that's exactly what I'm talking about in terms of color. I mean, green and black does not have defensive cards. It's usually white that has the protection cards. I mean, green does have some, but, you know, like Tammy has protection and stuff like that, but usually it's green and white, it's Celestia. So, I, I don't understand the black color. Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. But yeah, I don't think she would have seen play. She's way too slow. Okay, so next card. <clears throat> Lucian. Lucian. Sentinel. Lucian. Ah, dude, what's wrong, Vinny? Sentinel of Light. Dude, Sentinel of Light, and you made him... Oh, you made him Rakdos. You made him black and red. This, this is so annoying. Literally changed the color, dude. It's supposed to be... It's supposed to be Orzhov, it's supposed to be uh, white and black, dude, you almost got it, you almost got it. Uh, but okay, Lucian, Sentinel of Light. <clears throat> one mana to one first strike. This is, by the way, this is an insane stat line, I'm not even joking, this is an insane stat line, straight up. And the fact that you can pray, pay him with hybrid mana, hybrid mana is that you can choose either one of these mana to use, you can pay one red or you can pay one black. Uh, that's crazy, that's crazy versatile. Versatile and yeah, dude, one mana, two one of first strike. That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. Whenever another creature you control dies, put revenge counter on Lucian. Then if there are four more counter on Lucian, transform it. Oh, so we'd have maybe it's here. Lucian the Purifier. Double strike whenever a creature you control dies. If it's a turn on temple creature you control. Yeah, this is insane, dude. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, yeah, obviously this is like top tier card, I mean, I mean, uh, that's so funny to me to see, like, how taking Legends of Frontera cards and putting them into magic is gonna be either broken or completely useless, depends on which game it is, just, it's super funny, because just how the mana system works, and yeah, obviously, Lucian, just by the fact alone that he's a 1 mana 2 1 with first strike, that's nuts, that's, oh, that's ultra nuts, that's ultra nuts, that's insane. And the transform effect is really difficult. Is really difficult to achieve. Not impossible, not impossible, but really difficult. You can run him in Boros counters because it has the color red. I don't think you would run him in with a black source, maybe in Mardu. Mardu is white, black, and red. But yeah, this card would have seen play in every single deck. I believe in every single deck. I can't see a single aggro deck that wouldn't run this card. It would have been bonkers, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, but really sick integration. So, Queen Damasia Wings, dude, dude, make her white, please, <laughs> for the love of God, you can't make Damasia cards non-white. Uh, but he made her uh, Gruul, Gruul is red and green. <clears throat> so, Queen Damasia's Wings, uh, 5 mana, 3, 5, again, same stat, li stat line, whenever Queen Damasia Wings enter the battlefield or, atta or attacks, create a Valor, a legendary, uh-huh, with Provoke. Yeah, so exactly what she does in the game. Which, by the way, is completely fitting for magic. This effect is this effect is seen a lot in magic recently. There's even a new cards from the new expansion, which I may or may not review. I mean, it kind of depends. Uh, that does exactly that. Well, not exactly the same stat line, but it does the same thing. There are a lot of cards that summon a familiar, which is like a special, you know, token that relates to the card and. This does exactly that. There are a lot of Magic the Gathering cards with this effect. So, whenever you attack, if all attacking creatures are scout... Are scouts? Oh, it's a human scout. Untap them. After this phase, there's an additional commentary. Ooh, 
She doesn't have haste though. Oh wow. This is a really neat card. This is a really neat card. I mean, ag again, perfect representation from Legends of Frontera, perfect integration, but would it seem play in Magic the Gathering? Wow, that's good. Creating a token is kind of nice, especially where you have all these word, word uh, you know, board wide buffs, like uh, wedding announcement and stuff like that. Huh. Damn. That's interesting. Maybe like put her in a scout deck or something. It's kind of slow, but that's really cool. That's really cool. I can see this card actually working. That's really cool. That's really awesome. I actually like that. I actually like that a lot. That's pretty dope. I like this card. Okay. So let's continue to the next card. By the way, uh, just in general, I think this card would have seen experimentation. I don't know if it would have worked. This card is way too complex to understand, I mean, human scouts, you don't know which scouts are in the game or not, or if they're in a, a, if there are any scouts in the first place. So, assuming if the scout deck would have been viable in Magic the Gathering, yeah, this card would definitely see play, but we can know, we can never know that. So, Shivana the Health Dragon, Abzan, finally, dude, you nailed the colors, again, Abzan is perfect, Abzan is perfect, dude, finally, Shivana the Health Dragon. Whenever a creature, wait, oh, she's at the exact st same stat line, 4 mana, 3, 4. Whenever a creature dealt damage by a dragon, you control this turn dies. Put a 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter on the dragon, so representing Fury, which is sick. Whenever she ban attacks, you, it gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, and you may pay Golgari mana. When you do, target creature you don't control, fights target creature you don't control, you may regenerate any dar dragon targeted this way. <laughs> That's pretty sick. That's, that's pretty sick, that's exactly what she does. It's essentially supposed to represent her spell when she attacks, when she leveled up. And yeah, that's sick. But, uh, by the way, this effect is insanely broken. <laughs> this is insanely broken. I'm 4 mana 3-4 that get plus 2 plus 2 when she attacks, that's insane. That's insane, and that's exactly the theme of Abzan, and the fact that she gets regenerate. By the way, regenerate is, if I remember correctly, again, this is a really old keyword, you don't see it anymore. Um, it's basically when you have the regenerate keyword on you, the moment you die, uh, you just instantly come back to life. So if, let's say, Shivana had a regenerate uh, token on her, and she died, she just instantly come back to life, but regenerate only works for the same round you casted it. If I'm not mistaken, it removed at the end of it is removed at the end of the round. So yeah. Regenerate only works for the same round you casted it. So yeah, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. That's ex that's insane. It would have seen play in any Abzan deck. I, not even a dragon deck. Just the fact that you have a four mana that turns into a five seven uh, five six when it attacks. Crazy. That's crazy powerful. That is, that is insane. And the fact that even if someone blocks her, she just got plus one, plus one. That's crazy. That's crazy powerful. That's insane. Uh, so yeah, again, perfect integration and insanely cool card. I would have loved, dude, I would have played the hell out of this card. Man, I miss Abzan. Abzan hasn't seen much love in a while. Holy. Abzan, by the way, is white, uh, you know, black and green. So, uh, let's, next card, Jarvan, finally, dude. What in God's name is that? Jarvan is bunt? I don't know. I don't think, Jarvan is bent. I, I don't understand the blue color here. I think Jarvan is more like Celestia. I, I think Jarvan is more like Celestia, more than bent. But I guess it can work as bent. I mean, I mean, I can work in bent, he can work in bent. Yeah, you know what, maybe I'm mistaken here. I'm thinking it's more white and green. I kind of don't understand the blue part, but it can work, it can work. So, Jarvan IV, or Javan, Jarvan the Fourth, Provoke, so again, the challenger, 6-4, and he costs six mana, of course, same stat line. You may cast Jarvan uh, as you attack. Ooh, if you do, it entered the battlefield with a shield counter on it. Tapped and attacking, oh, that's insane. Insane, dude. Whenever a creature is forced to block Jarvan, put a shield counter on Jarvan. Yeah, that's insane. That that would have seen, without a single doubt in my mind, that would have seen play in every single deck. In every... Bro, that would have seen play in every single deck. A 6-4 in magic with a shield token that can challenge, I mean, provoke its challenger, we kind of figured it out. 
Dude, what? Th that's nuts. That's nuts. The fact that you can summon it tapped and attacking is crazy. Is crazy. That That's insane. That's insanely powerful. This effect would have seen play in every single deck, no matter what. Every single board-based deck that runs these three colors. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. It would have seen play in every single deck. I have no doubt about it, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy powerful. I mean, six mana, yeah, it's on the expensive side, but for this effect? Dude, that's nuts. And he comes with a shield. If he came without a shield counter, I would have understood. But he comes with a shield counter. That's insane, dude. That's insane. Yeah, again, crazy good card. So, oh, Galio. Dude, Galio in Gruul? Come on, man. No, Galio is in Gruul. Galio the Colossus, so 7 mana, 0 and 9 with a Hexproof, okay? Hexproof is can be targeted by spells, by the way. Uh, but, I mean, you can still target him, your opponent can target him. So Galio assigns damage with toughness rather than its power, so it's supposed to represent Formidable, which is great. Whenever a creature in control is dealt damage, untap all creature in control other phase with an additional combat phase. Dude, what? That's straight up crazy. 7 mana for this effect is absolute nuts, that's cracking. Holy dude, I, that would have seen play. No way this card wouldn't have seen play. Hexproof? Dude, Hexproof on this unit, and mind I remind you, Galio is 10 times stronger in Magic than Legends of Runeterra, simply because of the fact that in Magic you heal after every round, so in Legends of Runeterra your unit stays, stays damaged, so if Galio took like 5 damage instead of, you know, in Legends of Runeterra he would have stayed on 4 health, but in Magic he would have just healed to full at the end of the round. So yeah, that's insane, that's basically a 5 mana 9-9 nine, nine with the Hexproof, and you get an additional combat phase? Dude, that would have seen play in every single deck. In every single deck. That's insanely strong. <clears throat> that, that effect is crazy powerful. Also, he's an artifact creature, and there are a lot of synergies with artifacts right now, so yeah. Insane, dude. Insanely powerful. Uh, Vayne, the Night Hunter, Boros. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I kind of I kind of would have given our Orzhov, maybe, but we are, maybe Mardu, maybe Mardu. I would have added Black. But making him Boros, I think this makes total sense. That, uh, yeah, that's logical. <clears throat> so, 3 mana, 3, 4, already solid stat line. When Vayne enters the battlefield, or at the beginning of your upkeep, put a tumble counter on Vayne. When Vayne attacks, remove all tumble counters from Vayne. When you do, you may cast an equipment from your hand by paying 4 minus X, where X is the number of counters removed this way. Oh, so it's supposed to be like tumble, yeah. When you cast an equipment this way, attach it to vein. <laughs> yeah, that's insane, dude. That that's insane. By the way, if you don't know, Boros White and Red is the color of equipments. Uh, and yeah, there are equipments in Magic. And in Magic, they work quite differently because in Magic, the way equipment works, you don't play them directly from your hand. You play them from your hand onto the board, and then from the board onto a unit. So, for example, if you want in Legends of Terra to equip a 2-mana weapon, <clears throat> a 2-mana weapon, you would have just paid 2 mana and equip it on a unit immediately. In Magic the Gathering, if a unit, uh, if a weapon costs 2 mana, you pay, you pay 2 mana and you put it on the board. Now, how do you equip it onto a creature? Uh, you pay the something called equip cost. Uh, it's written on the weapon. Let's say a weapon equip cost is 3 and the weapon itself costs 2. So you need to pay 5 mana in total to actually put it on a unit because you need to pay the 2 mana to actually play the weapon and then you need to pay 3 mana to equip it. So equipping straight up from a hand is a really powerful effect in Magic and there is a really good deck right now which called, uh, you know, Hammer Time. I believe it's in Modern. It's so sick, it's so sick, and it's basically revolving around equipping a giant hammer in like turn two or three. And yeah, equipping it's like straight up from hand or doing some sort of shenanigan tree to cheat out the equip cost. So Tumble is a really great way to kinda cheating out weapons straight up from your uh, hand, which is insanely powerful effect in Magic. And yeah. And by the way, once a weapon gets unequipped, let's say you equip Vayne and she dies, it just comes back to the board. So you don't have to pay the initial, you know, fee 
You don't need to pay the initial mana cost to play it, you just need to pay the equip cost. So this is incredible. This is incredible. I think this would have definitely seen play in Boros Equipment. Although Boros Equipment is kind of non-existent right now in Standard. Yeah, this card is really sick. <laughs> this card is really sick. I think it would have seen play. I definitely think this card would have seen play. I mean, when she entered the battlefield, you get a counter that's sick. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if you survive upkeep, if you should survive the next round, dude, you get like minus two to any equipment. You may cast an equipment for your hand. That's insane. You can even cheat out like really big equipments that cost like eight mana with Vayne. Yeah, I think this card is insane. I think this card would have seen play. I think this card, would, not in standard, because in standard equipment is kind of non-existent, but in older formats where equipment are insanely good, yeah, Vayne would have seen play, dude. Vayne would have seen play. She's crazy powerful. Okay, uh, last card, dude, final card. Morgana, oh, that's interesting, the Fallen Boros, dude, no way, you you haven't made her actually black, no, no way, dude, no way Morgana isn't Orzov, dude, holy, okay, Morgana, the Fallen, <clears throat> 5 mana for 5, with lifelink, of course, whenever Morgana enters the battlefield or attacks, put 2 shackles counter on target creature, then Morgana deals 3 damage to target player and 2 damage to each creature uh, with shackle counter on it, Creature with shackled counters on them can't attack or block. Gain to remove shackle counter from this creature. Yeah, perfect integration. Perfect integration once again. Exactly what she does in the game. Uh, will she see play in magic? I mean, shackle it. Yeah, she would definitely see play. <laughs> dude, she, I, I thought about it for a second and I'm like, yeah, she would have seen play. <laughs> like, dude, I mean, again... Lifelink, it's, it's kind of weird, it, it, she isn't supposed to be red, she's supposed to be black, but yeah, I mean, 5 mana, 4 or 5 with lifelink, that is a really solid stat line, and the fact that you can shackle anything and just prevent it from attacking, that's extremely good anti-aggro card, that is an extremely good, it's, she's total garbage against control, like total garbage, but yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what, maybe not that bad, maybe you can like, Nah, she's not that aggressive. In Magic, you need to be aggressive. You can't afford to, like, slam a lifelink or down like that. I don't know if she would see play against Control, but I would have put, like, two copies in my deck of Morgana. I think she's still really good, because she still deals two damage to the player. So, yeah, I think she's really good. I think she's actually really good. She definitely would have seen play against aggro, because she would decimate every single aggro in the game, aggro deck in the game, but... Against control, it's kind of iffy, I'm kind of contemplating, but yeah, th this card is insane. It would have seen play. I think it would have seen play in at least one type of deck. So yeah, really great. Wow. So that's pretty much everything. Yeah, we went through everything. We did it one take, so that's um, also a big surprise. But yeah, wow, dude. Straight up, perfect. Actually perfect. A every card here is perfect in terms of how it functions. I, I just, the colors just ticked me off, I'm not gonna lie to you, <laughs> the colors just ticked me off. But I guess he did wrote that he did not make them on flavor, he only based them purely on mechanics, he did, he did wrote that, oops. He did wrote that, so, yeah, okay, uh, shoutouts to you, this was amazing, Plague Amon, so straight up, yeah, I already upvote, so you should upvote this post as well. And hopefully, guys, you will enjoy you will enjoy this video. Again, I'm gonna squeeze it between videos. It's not gonna support, uh, you know, hurt my usual upload schedule. And that's all for now. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.